Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at this GTX 550 Ti. So we're just going to be taking a quick look at this card and seeing, is it still a viable option for just about anything here in 2020? So let's take a quick look at it. So you can see that it's a uh, Asus version itself, 975 megahertz overclocked beast. I mean, just look at this guy. He's, he's a pure beast. 1299 at a... I guess a second-hand store pretty much so that's about ten dollars for you US guys you can see it's listed under housewares fig knickknack and collectible so I don't really think this is so much a knickknack maybe a collectible 30 years from now but let's just go ahead and take a look and see if this card is worth the ten dollars that it costs the included accessories is pretty straightforward we have our user's manual of course there is a Mo or a Molex to 6 pin adapter and then obviously the installation driver CD and then we have the card itself right here so you can see this is the Asus I think it's a direct CU2 which is basically just a little bit better than the the reference style cooler it's a little bit larger kinda get the gist of it here so I think that this card is still brand spanking new. I don't see any signs of wear on any of the connectors. I mean, the thing itself has no dust on it. I mean, just look at the condition of it. The plastic is excellent shape. So I'm going to assume that this card has possibly never been used. So we're going to throw it in the computer, see if it even works, and uh, what kind of performance we can get out of this thing. So now let's actually slap this bad boy in here. So... We're going to take out the uh, this old card and we're going to slap this new baby in here. Take off the condom and uh, see what this puppy can do. Now when it comes to playing any sort of new game, this card only supports DirectX 11 so any new title made in like the last couple years is most likely not going to work with the card. I tried, you know, I'd like to be able to benchmark a newer game like uh, the new CODs or Cyberpunk, but unfortunately it just does not run. You can see that no valid DirectX 12 card is found. So you're going to have to keep that in mind with this card is you're going to be limited to uh, older games. So even if you did want to try and play a new game at super low settings, you're not going to be able to do that because this card only supports up to DirectX 11. So we're just going to start off these benchmarks nice and easy here. We just have a game, Minecraft. So it's a pretty simple game. It is a little bit more CPU intensive instead of GPU intensive. But let's just go ahead into settings here. And it's basically just... Uh, they're fancy, 1080p, so yeah, it's, I guess, higher settings, 1080p, so the game obviously is running fine. You can kind of see the GPU usage is pegged at 100%, so it is using the GPU quite a bit. RAM is sitting at about 0.6 gigs, so it seems to be running just fine on this 550 Ti. It's about probably about 40, high 30 FPS. So yeah, you should have no problem whatsoever running this game and it probably will have way more of an effect on your CPU than your GPU. So now we're going to try out some Black Ops 2. So it's definitely an older game, but it's still a fun game. So we're at about highest settings here. Graphics, 1080p, so high settings, 1080p. And you can see that the card is right now getting about high 80s, 70s FPS. So it's getting really good FPS actually and the game is quite smooth so it's probably a little bit better than the last gen consoles or last last gen consoles it's definitely a pretty playable game and if you like playing older games like this you're in luck because this card no problem whatsoever it's kind of the games it was made for so here we got some CSGO going and settings is 1080p everything is fairly high setting kind of a mixture of medium whatever right so you could bump it up if you're fine with a little bit of a lower FPS but I know a lot of you guys like to play it on a higher frame right so FPS is the top left hand side and it is pretty good for the most part it's well over a hundred with dips kind of into the 90s so 
either way the game is playing really smooth and it looks good so I can't say that there's really any any complaints about how this game plays on this card so booting up some GTA 5 and playing it on this card shouldn't pose a problem for you I'm playing at 1080p on normal settings and you can see that the FPS is staying it's gonna be staying around 60 frames per second so it's definitely a playable experience it's pretty smooth you could try upping these settings if you really wanted to I just recommend leaving them on low so that way when you know you get into intense situations or the frame rates dropping it's not dropping as low so pretty decent playable experience for the most part so we're gonna be trying out some Fortnite right now and the game is not going to play the best I will say that right now the resolution was bumped down to 1600 by 900 and the settings are set to a medium low kind of setting and although it says it's on a medium setting the game looks like trash so if you don't mind playing it like this you can play the game it is still kind of a playable game but it's gonna look like garbage and it might be a little bit choppy here and there so leave that up to you to decide so we're going to be moving on to Skyrim, and the setting was set on the when you start up the game, the startup was set to the ultra high setting, so it's pretty much the maximum settings that this game can run it. I do have a couple mods that are installed, like a couple visual mods, so it's going to improve the graphics of the game a little bit, but the card has no problem running, it's 1080p, it's smooth, it's playable, it looks good, so definitely rock some Skyrim on this card, no problem at all. So for BMNG Drive, the settings that I have going right now is a 1080p and they're for the most part pretty low settings. So you can kind of see that I don't have any of the special options on and everything is normal or low settings. So love when that happens. Just have a, a quick demo here. It's 30 FPS, like it's not a great frame rate it's playable by all means but it's nothing absolutely fantastic so now let's try playing some of the forest the settings are pretty much just a low setting texture resolution is set to half resolution display is a bump below 1080p 1600 by 1024 so you know nothing absolutely fantastic here the game does look reasonably well and the frame rate is pretty smooth for the most part, sometimes dipping below 30, sometimes staying above 30. But, you know, it's a playable experience, and, you know, if you enjoy the game, you could probably still have fun playing it. So I just wanted to throw this in here. I ran 3D Mark Fire Strike, well, just because, right? It's kind of get a, a score, so in case you're interested, I had an overall score of 1815. Graphics score was 1955, so... Nothing fantastic by any sorts of the means, but numbers are there if you want to compare them. In terms of overclocking and temperatures and yada yada, I managed to get about a thousand megahertz on stock voltage, no problem. I was messing with it a little bit higher. I did kind of get it to go to 1.1 gigahertz, but it was crashing and de defaulting to a lower clock speed all the time because we'd go in safe mode. Who else knows what was going on? So it's about a thousand megahertz is stock voltage, no problem, temperatures are good, it's just kind of what I left it on just for a trouble free experience, which is 25 megahertz over the boosted clock speed of this card. And temperatures usually stayed below 60 degrees Celsius and that's just with this style cooler, no replacement of the thermal paste even after all these years. So fairly quiet for the most part, the fan is audible, it's a little bit louder than my other fans when it starts getting up there. but. I do have a custom fan curve, so it's going to be probably a little bit louder than most case scenarios. So in terms of the overall gaming performance, just performance in general of this card, I wasn't necessarily disappointed. Uh, for the age of this card, it still can play some games. No, nothing new, obviously, because DirectX 11 is where the support ends, and just trying to you know, even start up some newer games. I was having absolutely no success with it. So if you're intending on playing older games, some basic games, you just want a you know, cheap system to get you going, or you know you want to give it to someone or your kids or something who doesn't really play any actual games, this card would you know have no problem whatsoever doing that. So this pretty much wraps up this video. 
overall, in my opinion, this card for $10 is not a bad, bad deal. It still can play some games. It works fine for media, playback, and whatever else. So, you know, if you want to buy something like this for dirt cheap, and you have use for it, then may as well, right? Like, it still supports DirectX 11, so it's not completely outdated. But if you have an older system with like an old AMD HD 6450 or a pre-built piece of junk or whatever, you could put this card in here and you probably would have some success with playing games without upgrading your entire system. So that pretty much, you know, my opinions on this card, it does what it's supposed to do, I guess. And for $10, can you really complain? If you want to see any more games or benchmarks, just let me know and I'll try to let you know what the performance is like. That pretty much concludes this video, and uh, thank you guys for watching. See ya.